All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today we're here with a familiar uh, friend of the show, Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. We thank our brother for taking up his time uh, for all his you know travels all over the world, uh, spreading the message. So, Bishop Nathaniel, thank you for joining the show, and um, it's good to see you again. Uh, good to see you too, Phil. All praises for having me back. It's a pleasure. All right, Bishop Nathaniel, you know, talk to people a little bit because we have a lot of newcomers since the last time you was on. Tell people just a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay, all right. Well, I'm the founder of uh, Israel United in Christ, which was founded in 2003. Uh, we share the gospel to and our oppressed people from Africa towards Iran and Iraq throughout the Americas, through the Caribbean. Uh, sharing the good news that they are the people of God, the sons and daughters of God, that they are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. We, In fact, we are the only organization uh, that cares about, well, I shouldn't say cares about, that deals with the diaspora. Now, I'm not talking about you, Phil. I'm talking about in terms of our religious groups, that in terms of gathering the oppressed people of, that we have, our oppressed people, who have been scattered in slavery and colonization. We are one of the rare groups that deal with that because basically, Phil, we are a forgotten people. We are a forgotten people. So if I can, if I want to share something with the people, I want to go to Deuteronomy 28 just to give a brief on what we teach. All right? Uh, let's open it with Deuteronomy 28, 15. I just want to give a brief synopsis on what we, the Israelites, teach. And I want to say for the record, we are not a hate group. We are a love group. We love our people. Read that for me. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So this was on the continent of Africa. Most people, a lot, and believe it or not, Phil, a lot of Christians believe that Moses spoke to the 12 tribes of Israel in London or somewhere like that, in some European location. But no, on the contrary, this was on the continent of Africa. We had made our exodus from Egypt. We were on our way to the land of Canaan, which was further northeast Africa. Watch this, verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Okay, so Deuteronomy 28 verse 32 says our sons and daughters would be given to another people. That's talking about slavery, okay? That is talking about slavery. And what we discuss in the Bible, no church talks about it. Jump down to verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. Okay, now we're in verse 48. Okay, read it again. Watch this. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Therefore shall you serve your enemies. Which the Lord shall send against thee, mm -hmm. in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So you got to serve your enemies for food, water, clothing. And in want of all things, education, medicine, whatever, go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So the yoke, I don't know why it's still showing uh, so security or water. I'm talking about yokes of iron. Okay, yokes of iron. So what we're reading in the Bible is what actually happened to our people and only our people. So don't get, I don't want nobody to get confused and say, this happened to everybody on the planet. It did not happen to everybody on the planet. This happened to us. Now watch verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. That word Egypt means bondage. When you read Exodus 20 verse 2, that word Egypt means bondage. So it's saying, and the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. With ships. With ships. What kind of ships? Cargo slave ships like you can see on the screen. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. We wouldn't see our homeland no more again, the promised land. Go ahead. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Up and there, once you get off those ships, you shall be sold unto your enemies. 
for bondmen, for slave men, and bond women, and slave women. Can somebody tell a black woman she went in slavery with us? We went, we went enslaved together. We're gonna be delivered together. It ain't gonna be no feminists on one side and men on the other. We was in bondage together. We're gonna be saved together, and that goes for you Latinos too. Okay, you was in bondage with us as well. Read. And no man shall buy you. No man shall buy you. We had great black leaders that tried to rise up and save us, like Mal Malcolm X, Medgar Evers, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey. They all failed. They were unsuccessful in delivering us from the curses that God put upon us. So, Phil, that's what I wanted brothers and sisters to understand, that what we teach is that we are the Israelites. Oh, verse 64. How could I forget verse 64? Watch this. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. Now remember where we were. We were on the continent of Africa. So he's saying we would be scattered from one end of the earth even unto the other. So here we are right now in the United States of America. Go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. So there was two major slave trades of recent. You had the sub sahara slave trade, which sent out people from Africa towards Iran, into Iran, into Iraq, into India. Then you had uh, the transatlantic slave trade, which took us from the continent of Africa to Europe, the Americas, the Caribbean islands, so forth and so on. And in these places, Phil, we started to serve other gods, which neither... Neither thou nor thy fathers have learned. So those of us that were taken down by Europeans, we worshipped a white Jesus, a white God, white supremacy. Those of our people that were taken down by the Arabs, we, we were forced to worship something called Allah, where we worship the Kaaba stone, which is idolatry. We kiss a black rock. It's all idolatry. From the white Jesus to the black Kaaba stone, it's all idolatry. So now, in these last days, Phil, our job, according to the great commission Christ gave us, when he said, go ye therefore, give me that Matthew 28. Bear with me, Phil, just bear with me a second. Matthew 28, you know what I want, verse 19 around there. Okay, come on. Matthew 28, verse 19. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, verse 19. And verse 19. Matthew 28 and verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. So when Christ said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, he said that because the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered in all nations. You know Christians ain't figured that thing out yet. Go ahead. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in Teaching the Teaching them in the name. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, Phil, that has never been taught. When Christ said, teach them all things whatsoever I have commanded you, what did Christ command us to do? Matthew uh, uh, 19, 17. Let's get to the point. Matthew chapter 19, verse 17, please. Matthew chapter 19, verse 17. And verse 17. 17. Uh, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, if you want salvation, you want deliverance, keep the commandments. That's what Christ commanded us to do. Keep the commandments. Do you realize, Phil, Christians ain't figured that out yet? It's so, Christ said, keep the commandments if you want eternal life. Christians go, nah, you ain't got to keep no commandments. We learned all of that under white supremacy. Under white supremacy, from the time of our enslavement, we have been conditioned and taught to becoming Negroes, meaning immoral, illicit, uncivilized, okay? A people without law, and that's due to the Christian, modern-day Christian church. That's why in church you got pole, you got pole dances, you got twerking, you got adultery, you got homos left and excuse, sorry, I don't know if I can say that word. Can I say homos? You got homos left and right. Everybody's sleeping with the choir directors. The hell is going on here? And this is in the church, Phil. And don't nobody realize we've been misguided as a people. Hope you got that, Phil. Uh, I got I it. Got now, I got, I got, I got a, a question, question for, you. for you. Yes. All right. All right. So, so hold on. I'm getting some feedback. feedback. Where are they coming, Where are they coming from? from? 
I don't know why I'm getting feedback. Okay, so I want you to give 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 give, give me a scripture and explain it. I, I I want I want you to look at Genesis chapter fifteen verse thirteen. Read that and explain that to the audience. Okay, Genesis chapter fifteen verse thirteen. This is uh, when Abraham was promised, given the promise of the promised land, which was a future event, and he was told what would happen to his descendants. Let's read that. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Right. So this is when uh, the Israelites, remember, they were taken down into Egypt, 70 souls, grew into a nation, and they were afflicted. During, this is from the time of the... Let me get it right. From the 16th dynasty, 17th dynasty, 18th dynasty, and we came out at the beginning of the 19th dynasty, which was under Ramses II. Okay. Now, many people allude this to the United States of America. Okay. However, when you examine the edict of the transatlantic slave trade, most people don't know this, Phil. Pope Nicholas V issued and declared the transatlantic slave trade in effect in the 1400s, approximately around 1441, somewhere around there. He's the one that instituted the Atlantic slave trade. That was him. Followed behind him was Pope, uh, what's his name? Pope Alexander VI of Rome. He reinforced the transatlantic slave trade. All that from the time of 1492 with Columbus all the way up to today. And it's been longer than 400 years here. All right. So some people would say, mm-hmm. well, what, what, what is it that we done that, that made God so mad that we constantly suffer and yet other people don't suffer like we suffer? No matter where we go on the earth, somebody got an issue with us, especially as black Americans. Uh-huh. You know, other groups come to this country. You know, they, they, they step on our backs to get to wherever they're going to get to. And they benefit off of us, whether it's the Asians, the the Arabs, the Lebanese, the whoever else coming to this country, benefit off of us. We still getting afflicted. We still getting lynched like George Floyd. Okay, what did we do to God that was so bad? Oh, very good question, Phil. Very good question. Now, go back to Deuteronomy 28 and read first verse 15 one more again, and then we're going to jump to verse 43 to answer Phil's question. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments. All his what? His commandments. If we don't observe to do all his commandments. And his statutes. And his statutes. Which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So Moses warned us, if you don't keep God's commandments, these, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. I don't want y'all to forget. Remember what Christ said. He said, if you want eternal life, keep the commandments. Moses was telling us, keep the commandments or these curses will come on you. Now watch this, verse 43. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. The stranger is the white man, the Chinese, and all other nations. They shall get up above thee very high. And thou shalt come down very low. We are on the bottom of society. Go ahead. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee. The white man owns the banking system. The white man owns the uh, um, IMF, uh, International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank. Go ahead. The, and thou shalt not lend to him. He don't. We don't lend to him. Go ahead. He shall be the head. The white man's the head nation. Go ahead. And thou shalt be the tail. We are the tail of all nations. Okay. This was a curse, Phil, that God said would come on us for breaking his law. Now, watch this, Phil. Amos chapter 3, verse 1. This is what people say. Well, all nations break God's law. That is true. But there's something you're forgetting. Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord had spoken against you, O children of Israel. We're the children of Israel. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. We're the race he brought up out of Egypt. Go ahead. Saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You only have I known of all the families 
of the earth. You know what you only means? Let's switch those two words around. Only you. That's what God is saying. He created all people on the planet, but guess what? We're his favorite. We're his heirs. He gave us the law, statutes, and commandments. And the other nations, our job was to teach them. But guess what we did, Phil? We broke everything. We rejected God's laws. Now here we are, 2021, still suffering, going, how did we get here? Read. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So here we are punished. Here we are in 2021, punished. And we sit in the Christian church going, it's a lot of mine. I've got no shot to hell up with all those simple songs. Let's keep the commandments. Let's return to the Lord as the Israelites. No, no, no. I'm a Negro Catholic and I, you don't got to keep no law. We keep making the same blasted mistakes over and over and over. I hope you got that, Phil. Yeah, I, I, I definitely uh, got that. Now, now it's, it's, some, it's some other questions that we have. Now, on our platform, I call the, the nation of America Babylon because of the wickedness that's in this nation, okay? With this, this place is, is extremely wicked. Yes, and, and, and we see, we see, I believe in my opinion, some of the judgments falling upon this nation. Um, definitely, I noticed more since after 2019, I noticed after that celebration in, in, in Ghana by that year return, then after that, oh boy, calamities start happening to this place. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to mention so, certain things because you get your page taken down. So I'm not, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they said they, they have authoritarian censorship when it comes to that one thing, but that's part of it too, in my opinion, pestilence. I'm going to use that word pestilence um, that we have seen. Um, but what is your opinion on, on all the calamity that has uh, fall upon this nation? Because I believe this nation will not return to what it once was due to the judgment that's, that's fall upon this nation. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, Jeremiah 28, verse 8. Uh, many of you may or may not know we are Bible based. And if you notice, I try my best to prove everything according to Scripture. Now, what Phil said is re, uh, re what's the word reinforced by what Christ said in Matthew 24. But I want to read Jeremiah 28, verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. America's the greatest kingdom on the earth. The prophets said there would be war, pestilence. You know pestilence. You know that word that you can't use else you get your page taken down. Pestilence and evil. Go ahead. The, verse 9, the prophet which prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. Right. So now there is no peace on this earth. The true prophets prophesied of war, evil, and pestilence. Did Christ say that in Matthew 24? I need you to stay with me. Matthew 24. Okay. Matthew 24. And let's look at verse 7. Matthew chapter 24. In verse 7, for the nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So Christ prophesied the same thing that Jeremiah and the, all, all the prophets prophesied about. Any great kingdom, there shall be war, there shall be pestilence, that means disease, viruses, and there shall be, what was the other word? Pestilence and evil. Evil, war, and pestilence. Those three things. And that's what's here in America. And it's only going to escalate it. Escalate, Phil. It's not going to. It's going to be like a, another scripture says it this way, Phil. It shall be like a woman in travail in the book of Thessalonians. Where it shall be like, you know how a woman gives childbirth? Her, her contractions may be 15 minutes apart. Then it goes down to 10 minutes apart. Then five minutes apart then four minutes apart, then two minutes apart, and then boom, that baby come out. That's how this great evil war and pestilence shall be here in the United States of America. And it is prophesied, Phil, listen good, I want everybody to listen to what I'm about to say. The EU, NATO, shall turn against the United States of America and burn her with fire. You can read about that in Revelation 17 and the book of Obadiah. 
Okay, Phil, you got that? I got it. So what, what's that scripture in, in, in Revelation chapter 18 where it, where it tells the, the, the God's people to, you know, separate yourself, you know, from the, the, the wicked people, lest the judgment fall upon you? You yes, know that scripture? Sir. Yes, sir. Revelation 18 verse 4. Let's get that. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. Mm -hmm. For her sins have reached unto heaven. When it says her sins have reached unto heaven, that's going into space travel. That's going into your bill these billionaires like Elon Musk and all these people. Now they're doing space travel. Her sins have reached unto heaven. They're going out into space, Phil. So the Lord told us to separate ourselves from them. Okay. How do we separate? Okay. The first thing we got to do, Phil, thinking about everybody's economic condition. The first thing we got to do is separate spiritually and mentally. Those are the first two things which are mandatory. The third thing would be um, if people choose to leave the country, that would be the third option they have. But I'll say this about that. Uh, having traveled as I do, America's hand is everywhere. Like there's a, a recent turmoil. And I went to Cuba, Phil. Cuba, beautiful place. Now if you look on the news, there's all kind of uprising. The people are screaming for democracy, democracy. All America got their hands in everything. Haiti, what just happened to Haiti? The president of Haiti was just put to death for not accepting. Uh, I won't say the word, but it's... Uh, you know what I'm saying, Phil. Yeah, we know. We know what you're talking about. Right, right. So he's dead now. He's dead now. So, so okay. So you, you mentioned about se separation. So th 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 there's a group of people here in America, and, and I'm more so along the lines of preparing ourselves to do the third option you were saying, because if you don't do the third option, which is eventually remove yourself, you know, from the white supremacists, is why we so bogged down mentally and spiritually, because you have to separate yourself physically from people just to get a healing, right? Um, you can't hang out with drug dealers and alcoholics and talk about you want to do what's right before the Lord, correct? Uh, that's correct. Okay. So we have, a, we have a, a group of people that literally, you know, I say this, they, they love uh, 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 white Jesus and the Democrat Party. That's their religion. <laughs> and, and that's their religion. You know it, it, you know it to be true. No, no matter what evil come out of that party, you know, that we we going to follow those two things, right? Yes, sir. Um, so what is it with the people that want to hold on to the, the, the wickedness that's here? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to them people? Well, when we go back to Revelation 18, since that was the scripture I pulled earlier, jump down to uh, verse 10. Verse 10. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her Read torment. Read the verse before it. Before it. Verse 9, the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived... Started 8, I apologize, that's me. Verse 8, therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Talking about the plagues that's going to come here to America. Death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. So that's what's going to come here, and that is the final outcome for black Christians... That's the final outcome for uh, black Democrats, black liberals, black Republicans. That will be their final outcome. Like it says in Proverbs, uh, though hand join in hand, it says the wicked shall not be unpunished. So if you choose your lot to take hands with the Democratic Party or the Republican or a Socialist Party, I don't care what party, you going down with them, okay? Phil, understand, our people don't realize that with over the past 60 years, there have been more than 67 coups in Africa orchestrated by France, America, and other European powers. So that's why I always say there's no escape. No matter, Think about it, Phil. Think about it. Oh, hey, I don't know if I could show this, Phil. John Perkins. Can y'all put John Perkins on the film? You ever heard of John Perkins? Economic no. man, Phil? No. Okay. Watch this. This is John Perkins. It's short. It's only like a m minute and a half. Go ahead. Play that. 
we will identify a country, usually a developing country, that has resources we, we covet, our corporations covet, like oil. And then we arrange a, a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sister organizations. Now, most everybody in, the, in, in, in our country believes that that loan is going to help poor people. It isn't. Most of the money never goes to the country. In fact, it goes to our own corporations. It goes to the Bechtels and the Halliburtons and the ones we all hear about, usually led by engineering firms, but a lot of other companies are brought in. And they make fortunes off building big infrastructure projects in that country. Uh, power plants, industrial parks, uh, ports, those types of things. The country's left holding this huge debt that it can't possibly pay. So at some point, we economic hitmen go back in and we say, you know, you can't pay your debts. You owe us a pound of flesh. You owe us a big favor. So sell your oil real cheap to our oil companies or vote with us on the next critical United Nations vote or send troops in support of ours to someplace in the world. Thank you. <clears throat> I stood in front of the Shah of Iran, the presidents of Indonesia, Ecuador, Panama, members of the Royal House of Saudi Arabia, and I've said something like, in this hand, I have millions of dollars for you and your friends if you play our game. In this hand, I have a gun in case you decide not to. Now, my words were more diplomatic than that, but that was the message. I was an economic hitman. And we economic hitmen have created a new global economy, really, a form of capitalism that I call predatory capitalism. That the US government was deeply involved in the overthrow or assassination of Prime Minister Mossadegh of Iran, President Allende of Chile, Arbenz of Guatemala, Diem of Vietnam, Lumumba of the Congo. And speaking of Allende of Chile, he was replaced by the terribly okay. brutal dictator, right General there. Pinochet. I wanted, you to see, I wanted you to see, Phil, that um, he admitted that America was implicit in the assassination of Patrice Lumumba of the Congo. Now, when you watch the film, the documentary, they make it seem like it was the Netherlands involved in his assassination. But John Perkins, who was there at the time, he says it was America who was behind the assassination of Patrice Lumumba. But President Patrice Lumumba. America got their hands everywhere, and their reach is long. That's what I need everyone to understand. You got that, Phil? Yes, yes. We, we definitely know their hands, and it's not just their hands. It's, it's the whole Western system, because if they, it's not their hand, then you got the British. Their hands is all over the place. You have France, which is, you're talking about the continent of Africa, at least. France. Now, the, their biggest issue right now is, is, is China. That's their big issue. Right. So is China, are, are they labeled as the king of the East? Uh, China are part of the kings of the East. They're, in the Bible, they are known as Moab, M-O-A-B, mm -hmm. uh, filled with wrath and pride because they hate black people. They Like when they built, Phil, you know when they helped build, not help, they built the, oh, what is it called, the African Union in Ethiopia. And yes, Ethiopia. I've been there. Right. I, I, Lord, I'll play, I'll get to go to uh, Ethiopia. Beautiful but, building. Yes. They put microphones all throughout the building to record and download information. I tell, bro, when I read, I was so furious at this. The African leaders have enough uh, money combined where they don't need China to build nothing. That they got feel the way they got it. Our the African leaders they are afraid to unite and stand together. Anytime an African leader mentions uniting, coming together, he mysteriously gets assassinated. Or there's a coup in his land, his country. That's what happens. And China's about with America 100 percent mm -hmm. Well, so, you know, I, I spoke to you know a few business leaders in Ethiopia and I asked them, I said, Well, why are you dealing with China now? And, and you know what he said? He said that the reason why we're dealing with China over the United States is because the United States come in, they want to get involved in our affairs. They want to bring in LGBT. And, you know, we're just not for that. You know, especially in Ethiopia, if you've been there. You know how strictly Orthodox Christian they are. Very, very conservative environment, uh, I will say. 
Um, and they say, we're just not for that. So the Chinese, they do loan us the money, but they just don't get involved in our affairs. Right. Uh, I remember I was reading some, some time ago how China's relationship with, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was Zimbabwe, where they built Zimbabwe's airport and Zimbabwe's unable to pay China back. But now China owns the airport of Zimbabwe. They also help run their police force in Zimbabwe. China just uh, bought Jamaica's uh, water ports because Jamaica could not pay back the water, I mean, the money that China had loaned them. It's a trap. It is a financial trap. The way Kwame Nkrumah said it, he said it's neo-colonialism. This is a new form of colonialism in China and is following right behind America's footsteps. But do you believe that that the African continent will turn around because that there's a group of young people on that continent right now that I believe they, they're going to be part of turning that around. But what do you believe in that? Well, yes, on the continent of Africa, they need the, the, the proper teachings and they can come together. I do believe that, but they, they got to come together under the right mindset, a unified mindset. I did want to show a book, Phil. I did want to show a book because some people may not believe the Bible. They go, I don't believe that book. What are your other sources that you may have? So, Phil, just do me one favor if I can. I did want to show some other sources because I know you have a lot of black unbelievers who, because our history have been lost and stolen. So I want to show you these books. Just put them on the screen. Come on, brothers. Just put a book on the screen so I can see the book. Pick one. Okay. I want to show you, I want to show you this just to verify that what I'm saying is the truth. All right, this is uh, John Ogilby. This was a book written in 1671, okay? Africa uh, being an accurate description of the regions or Egypt, Barbary, Libya, and there's a long word there that I can't pronounce. It. But let's go inside the book. Go inside the book. Let's zoom in at the top. This is on page 341. This is about Africa. Watch what it says. Many Jews also are scattered over this region, meaning the region of Africa. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed, inhabiting both sides of the river Niger. Others are Asian strangers who fled either from the desolation of Jerusalem by Vespasian or from Judea, wasted and depopulated by the Romans. Persians, Saracens, and Christians, or else such as came out of Europe. Now, these were the black Jews that came out of Europe, whence they were banished out of some parts of Italy in the year 1342, out of Spain in the year 1462, out of the low countries, that means Netherlands, Amsterdam, in 1351, out of France in 1403, out of England in 1422. Now, remember, Phil, these were black Jews, these were Africans, as people say today, Africans. These all defer in habit and are divided into several tribes, having no dominion, though both wealthy and numerous, but despised of all nations, and so abominated by the Turks, that's the Arabs, that they are not admitted to be Mohammedans unless first baptized, and then no otherwise made use of than to receive their customs and gather in their taxes." So this book was written in the late 1600s that many black Jews which lived in Africa were kicked out of Spain, Italy, the Netherlands, France, and England. These were black Jews from Africa that were keeping God's laws. And this history has been lost to our people because we don't read the old books. We like books from uh, 1993 on up. No, these books from that time period are lost. You need them books from when we was in slavery. Give me another one. Give me another one. Like uh, Negroes and Jews. Come on, I need you to be on, on top of this thing. Okay, watch this, Phil. I, I'm going to show you something. All right? Right. Here's a book, The Negroes and the Jews by Lenora E. Burson. Let's go inside this book. Okay. Let's go inside and let's take a look what it says. Go to the top. Okay. Negroes claim to be Jewish is legitimate. The land of Israel is located in Western Asia 
and borders on North Africa. All of the native inhabitants of that region were non-white. When Spain expelled its Jews in 1492, many of them went to Africa. It seems probable that some of them were brought later to America as slaves. Mm, see that right there? Look, you don't learn this in school, that the Jews from uh, Spain that were kicked out were made slaves in the Americas. Go ahead. The spirituals never sing of African rivers. It's always the Jordan or the Red Sea. They don't sing about African chiefs or kings. It's David or Moses or some other Jewish characters in the from the Bible. Right. See, we thought, Phil, we were taught that the re reason that the slaves sang songs about Moses and David and the Jordan is because we were indoctrinated by Christianity. That's not true. When they kicked the Jews out of Spain, they brought them to America. And those Jews, those black Jews who lost their culture, sang songs about David and the Jordan and Moses and Christ. This is what we did. Give me the next book. Yeah, here's another book, Phil. What's the year in that book? This is called Earth and its Inhabitants of Africa. What's the year at the bottom? 1892. Watch this. Go inside this book. I'm telling, so the, the Bible is a true source, but there's other old books. Go ahead. The uh, east of Great Popo begins the Dahomey Territory, guarded by the important town of Gelvia, known to Europeans by the various names of Fida, Havida, Wida, Wida. The old writers called it Judah. And its inhabitants were said to be Jews. Right. So now you see, Phil, you see that word white up? When you look it up, it says this word means birds. It's a, it's a country in Africa. They say it means birds. But this old book says the old writers called it Judah and its inhabitants were said to be Jews. That's been lost today, Phil. Because when you look in modern day books, it'll say Wida means land of birds or something like that. They have removed the term Judah all together from it. So it's lost to our people. That's why I say you need those old books when we were enslaved because they wasn't afraid of us reading because we couldn't read back then during the time of slavery. Give me the map now. Watch this, Phil. What's the name of this book right here? I forgot. This book right here was called The Myth, Rewriting the History of the Hebrews, something like that. Y'all got it? Come on, I need y'all to help me out here. I want, to, I want to give Phil the exact name of the book, okay? Let me see. Bear with me a second. Okay. The name of this book is The Lost Tribes, A Myth, Suggestions Towards Rewriting Hebrew History by Alan, Alan H. Godby. Now, this book was published in 1864. Now, Phil, on this, in this book, they give you a map of the continent of Africa, can we zoom in on the blue first? Let's go over there near the, near the blue. On the continent of Africa, I need you to zoom in so Phil can read it. Highlight it. I got it circled. You got Levite cities. You got Kingdom of Ephraim in blue. You got, uh, what does it say? Abiel, can you read some of that? Uh, you got the, the home. From, so you see Ephraim in the blue circle in the center. Above it is Levite cities. Towards the right is Levite cities as well. And that's Nigeria, Nigeria above it. You can see it. Underline Nigeria right there. It's right above the blue. Yeah, right yeah, across. Yeah, put your cursor right there. Right. Now, in Nigeria, you got Levites. And this is old, Phil, from the 1800s. Okay? Up above it, can you read it? It says Oldham Jewish colonies encircled to the left. Can you see that, right. Abiel? The homie, you have the homie Jews to the left, up, up to the top. Uh, it says Ga Ganatan, Jewish Kingdom of Ganata. Yeah, go to the bottom, bottom where it says San Tome. Right. See oh, under the blue, under the blue, uh, under underneath the blue, the blue circle. It says San Tome yeah, Jews. San Tome. San Tome Jews, and the bottom it says Mar Marumba, Ma Ma Marumba Jews. Right. So the old scholars, Phil. This is what I need all your viewers to understand. All the old scholars from the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, they knew who was on the continent of Africa. They knew exactly who they brought to America, where they brought throughout the Caribbean, so forth and so on. 
This history has been lost to us 100%. Now we're rising up, Phil, and restoring this information to our people. Christ was black. Moses black. Jeremiah, King Solomon. They, these were all black men. Sarah, black. Abraham, black. Adam and Eve, black. Everybody that was for the Most High in the Bible was black, what we would call black today, Phil. And that's what's been lost and destroyed in the minds of our people. Was there any, any other books or no? Was that it? Okay, that was it, Phil. And, and, and you see, based on that map, that so-called Middle East was Africa. Yes, sir. Yes, oh, I'm glad you said that. I, show, I put something up there about the Middle East. Watch this, Phil. I'm glad you mentioned that Middle East. Put that on the screen. Why is it, read that, Abiel, come on, man. Why is it called the Middle East? Raise it up. The term Middle East originated from the same European perspective that described Eastern Asia as the Far East. Jump down the background. Raise it up. I want this section here. Right. Read that. Background. The origin of the term Middle East is considered to be in the British India office during the 1850s. It was popularized by Alfred Thayer Mahon, an American naval strategist who was referring to the region between Arabia and India in 1902. Mayan's definition of the Middle East was the area around the Persian Gulf. Sir Ignatius Valentine Kirill further enlarged this definition to cater for the Asian regions whose territories extended to India. Prior to the Second World War, another term, the Near East, denote, denoted that the, uh, the eastern shores of the Mediterranean, in addition to regions centered around Turkey, Middle East was used by the British while naming its command in Egypt in the late 1930s. It was after this usage that the term became widely used in the West. In 1946, the Middle East Institute began operating in Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States. All right, so now what I want y'all to see, you see that first sentence there, the origin of the term Middle East? is considered to be the British India office during the 1850s. Most people don't realize there was something else going on in the 1850s. They built the Suez Canal, which cut off Israel from Egypt. When you read the Bible, it says the children of Israel walked from Egypt into Israel. Christ, in Matthew 2.13, walked from Israel into Egypt. So what happened when they built the Suez Canal? They built this huge water system that separated uh, Israel from Egypt. Well, separating Israel from Africa, I'll word it that way. The Suez Canal cut off Israel from Africa. Okay, and that's when the term Middle East came about. That's why when you mention the term Israel, you say the word Israel to people to go, oh, that's in the Middle East. Nobody says today, Phil, that's in Africa. Why? Because the Suez Canal was created in 1859. The same time that they uh, made that term, the Middle East, popular. That's what they've done, Phil. This whole thing has been a great conspiracy against our people, the children of Israel. Well, you can't hide the truth uh, forever because they tried. I mean, they tried, and, and now, you know, a lot of the truth is starting to come to the light. And even watching this, you know, program today, some people are going to learn a lot, you know, just based off of that history you've shown right there and that even that map. It was shown that basically – You've seen a lot of, you know, different Jewish groups on the continent that they didn't even know about. Right um, now, let's fast forward to, to 2021 and the condition of our people today. Um, what should they do for those who are trying to save themselves uh, to repent and turn back to the, the law, statute and commandments? Because a lot going down right now. We got this heat going on in the West. You know, the earth is absorbing so much heat and not putting out enough heat. You got waterways drying up also in the West. Where you know, it's going to bring famine eventually. Um, what can people do to save themselves from what's coming down the pipe? Mm. Well, one of the main things we have to do, and which we have never done, give me Zephaniah 2 and 1. Watch this. <laughs> Our people talk about this, but they never implement this. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Zephaniah, mm, bear with me, Phil. Bear with me a second. Zephaniah 2 says, Gather yourselves together 
Yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. So we have never, never come together, come together as a race, as a people, united under one banner. That's never been seen before. It's never been done from the time of slavery. We've always been divided into different political groups, religions, and that th these things, politics and religions, have been used to separate, divide us, and keep us at odds with one another. Did you find it yet? Read it. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. We are the nation not desired. We are the nation not desired desired. That's what some black people can't figure out. They want to be part of the Democrats and Republicans. Oh, like our sister, I forgot it was her name, Candace Owens. Oh, well, yeah, we got to be part of this thing. No, no. We got to come together as a race first, as a people. Then and only then can the Lord begin to use us and then therein deliver us. That's what's going to happen. Okay? Even on the continent, Phil. When we go to the continent, those same religions that plague us here in America are on the continent. I see Catholics, I see Baptists, I see Muslims, and they are at odds one with another. And, I'm, and we tell them, you're not Catholic, you're not Muslims. We are the Israelites. We must come together. We must unite as a people. And it's so foreign to them, Phil, because many of our people love white supremacy. We, if it ain't white Jesus, they don't want it. Okay? Like, no, 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 it has to be Jesus white. And our child, we challenge them, Phil. Open your Bible and show us Jesus is white. Do you realize, Phil, not one can do it? Yet many of them still hold on to that, just like in America. Many of our black brothers and black sisters, we will challenge them. Show us in the Bible Jesus is white. They can't do it. And then when we show them that Jesus is black in Revelation 1, verse 14 and 15, Revelation. they'll say color. To read it, read it. They'll say color don't matter. Re Revelation chapter 1 verse 14 His head and his hairs were white like wool Wool, wool is a texture There's two kinds of hair you got, you got thin hair, straight thin hair And wool afro hair Those are the two main types of hair So Christ had wool hair which is afro hair right? As white as snow His hair was fully white And his eyes were as a flame of fire When it says his eyes were as a flame of fire When you read uh, Genesis 49 Verse 12, it says his eyes shall be red with wine. Also in Matthew chapter, uh, I believe it's 18, if I'm not mistaken, it says they call Christ a wine. wine bibber. Okay, but read on. Verse 15, his head and his hairs were white like wool and his, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. And his feet like unto fine brass. Brass is brown. Then it says, as if they burned in a furnace. If you burn anything in a furnace, Phil, if you burn white rice, what color does it get? Black. So the Bible's given a description of Christ. Black Christians will read it and then say, it doesn't matter what he looks like. That's white supremacy with that uh, that computer virus going off in their head. And that's the, no, 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 we, we can't accept that. We can't accept that. Master, get mad at us. No. Imagine, Phil, if our people understood. Our king looks like us. We have a black king who gave his life for his black people. And that is too much for black Christians to fathom. No, no. It so offends them. You can't make this. In. And Phil, being in Ghana, I've traveled throughout Ghana from, we, uh, like we got, uh, we deal with orphanages in Ghana. We deal with building a huge school over there in Ghana. From Ghana to Kumasi, you would not believe the amount of images of white Jesus we've seen. We go into their supermarkets, there'll be a cup like this with a picture of a white Jesus on it. We'll get into a cab. On the cab is a picture of a white Jesus. On the billboards, you see pictures of white Jesus like this. And we're like, what? And these people are black, blackity, black, black, black. I ain't talking red bone black. I'm talking about blackity, black, black, black. But they got white Jesus everywhere. Our people are mentally and spiritually destroyed. And in order for us to get healed, Phil, so that we can unite as a people, they need God's hand in it. It has to come from this book that has been misconstrued, but it has to be taught the right way. 
Well, I, I definitely can can um, um, agree to what you said because I know in Kenya it's when I saw you know the, the the white Jesus in different places, but Ethiopia I didn't see it. I saw Jesus look like me and you over there, especially when I went to King Johannes's castle and his prayer room. His prayer room, Jesus was looking like you. Mary looked like me and you. I mean, nobody was white in, over there. You know, so that's why I say you need to go over there and look at, at, at some of those things. You'll see uh, a little different. Yes, sir. So they wouldn't colonize. <laughs> oh, praise. That makes a difference. <laughs> yes, sir. All praises, all praises. It does make a difference. Okay. Because there was a, a, a story at that castle um, where you they have a picture of actually the white men bowing down before King Johannes. And they said they wanted to evangelize and bring the, 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 the Bible, you know, to at the time Abyssinia. And he like, no, he said, we are, we already got that here. He said, we, we, no, we follow scripture. said, we don't need that. And actually kicked them on out of there. But really it was the, the agents trying to get in to overtake. Right. Um, so I, I think you really would, would enjoy that if you, if you would go. Yes, sir. Uh, if, if you have not been yet. So, you know, but, but brother Nathaniel, uh, tell people, you know, how they could possibly get in contact with you. If they, they may got some questions about something you said on the program, but I don't want them to read the questions at me. I want to direct the question to you. Well, definitely. Uh, I did give a wrong scripture. It was Matthew 11, verse 19, where they called Christ a wine bibber. If you could read that real quick. I just, I hate when I throw out a wrong scripture and then I confuse people. Read that for me, Matthew 11, 19. Matthew chapter 11, and verse 19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber. See, they call him a wine bibber. That's all I wanted. So now. Hey, Phil, did you look at the video I sent you regarding our project in Africa? Yes. Do you think it's possible if I can show it so that people can see, so they know I'm not hot smoke, I'm not BSing? Can you talk about the, the video where y'all went uh, donate at the uh, in Kumasi? Yeah, can we play it? I want to just show that video real quick so that people can see that, I'm, that we are building in Africa and it's not just talk. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you can go ahead and run that. It's not it's not a long video. You can run that. Shalom, most high Christ bless. Uh, this is the site, the school. Here is where it starts. So just already working. Shalom, shalom, uh, Israel leadership. Uh, quick update. Right now we are on the ground. We started from this week. Uh, we would like to show you how far we are right now. And as for the foundation, as you can see, take a look. That's the foundation that we are digging right now. All right. This is a quick update for the blocks. Uh, that is how many we make so far. The one that we made from last week. All right. So like this, we need a thousand two hundred blocks. See, right now we are doing a division of the washroom. All right. This place is a ladies' washroom. All right. We done the setup. Right now we're doing the men' washroom. We're doing the setup. Right now we are working on the. Um, the pillars right now, these are the pillars that we get. We're using that one now, which is already have how many? We already have one, and you can see two, and you can see three. All right? And there's another one, four. And this one is the one that we did yesterday. Take a look with the one that we did yesterday. Shalom, shalom, Israel, a quick update leadership for the, the job that we are doing down here. Right now, we are working on the steps right now. So take a look of the steps, both in and out. That's how far we are right now with the, with the steps right now. So that's a computer simulation of what we want it to look like eventually. Okay. Okay. So 
So what is the projected time for that to be complete? Uh, hopefully by sometime next year. We're going to do a major fundraising, a concert we're going to do. Um, these are the various places. If you don't live in the U.K. or you do live in the U.K., these are the places where the uh, donations could be sent. So hopefully by sometime next year. That's our projection. I hope, I hope, I hope, I pray. But we'll see how the funds come in so we can get this done, Phil. And all, all right. Done. All right. Good, good deal. So, uh, no, we, bit, bit, we don't just the, talk about it, we be about it. That, that's right, that's what you got to be. You, you can't just talk. That, I mean, people will pull your card on that. So, um, yeah, just tell people how to how to get in contact with you and say before you wrap up. I want them to know exactly how to talk to you. Okay, now watch this. Read that Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in, and the faith of Christ, Jesus. So, so you can reach us at www.israelunite.org. Again, www.israelunite.org. That's our website. Uh, if you want to email us, it's israel at israelunite.org for email. We have schools across the U.S. We have schools in on the continent of Africa. We have about four, five, five, five schools on the continent of Africa. Our goal is to try and get schools built up. And these schools, Phil, will not just be for Bible learning, but also for reading, writing, arithmetic, things of that nature to help our people, okay? So we're doing a massive job, and we need the help of good brothers and good sisters that see God's vision. So remember, we got to keep the commandments and have the faith of Jesus, the black Messiah. So I hope everybody understands our mission and our goals in this brief excerpt. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we'll put, you know, the information in the uh, pinned comment, and we definitely want to thank Bishop Nathaniel for bringing uh, some knowledge and education uh, that we need. Once again, you have any questions, ask Bishop Nathaniel. I'm pretty sure he or someone on his team will get back with you. So, brother, you say you have a blessed day, um, and, and, you know, take care of the family, and uh, you stay blessed.